Hello, welcome to this online presentation from the Best Bauer Dunn Museum in Libertyville, Illinois. My name is Heather and I'm a curator at the museum. And in this presentation, you'll get to see a little overview of our collections and I will show you a couple of objects that aren't on exhibit. Museums are known for exhibits and programming, but we also have collections. And our collections at the Dunn Museum help preserve the history of Lake County. And so we have items with strong Lake County connections that help tell that history for generations to come. Our collections got their start when Robert Vogel, a Lake County resident who was passionate about history and felt strongly that there should be a museum in Lake County, started one up in Wadsworth in the 1950s. It was just a private museum, um, an act of uh, passion for him. Some longtime residents may remember the museum. And the items he had in his museum became the foundations of the Dunn Museum collection. This is Robert Vogel with a fossil rock that's 420 million years old. And if you visited the Dunn Museum or visit in the future, this is in our exhibits and it is the oldest object we have in the collections. Vogel closed his museum around 1965 and the county took the collections. In 1976, we opened in Lakewood Forest Preserve in Wakanda where we operated for about 40 years. And then in 2018, we moved to our current location. We finished moving the collections in February of 2018 and opened new exhibits in March of that year. A section of the lower level of the building that we're currently in was developed for the collections with brand new shelving for our story and our objects. We went with compact, um, sometimes called mobile shelving, which you can see here on the right hand side with the handles and that allows us to move the shelves back and forth so that we don't have to have an aisle in between every shelving unit. Our collections cover a variety of materials um, since we try to preserve, preserve all aspects of Lake County history. So we have everyday household objects. We have items that tell the story of Lake County businesses, Lake County farms. We have a textile collection. We have some Native American items. We also have our archives, which are books, photographs, letters and diaries, maps, um, paper-based objects that we use for research. And we also have some bigger things like the equipment from farms and furniture. And the first item I wanna show you is from our furniture section. This chest came to Lake County in 1844, but it started out in Vermont. Franklin Shumway and Laura Ann Mixer met while they worked in the woolen mills in Vermont. They got married and decided that the woolen mill life wasn't for them. So they decided to come west and settle in Illinois. They packed this chest with their belongings and brought it with them down the Erie Canal, across Michigan, onto a steamship into Kenosha, Wisconsin. And then they brought it down into Illinois. And if you look at the edge of the piece here, there's some holes all the way around that have been filled in with wood putty. And the family story is that they nailed boards on it to keep it shut while it was transporting because it had all their family possessions in it. They settled on a farm up in Warren Township, and this chest was likely one of the first pieces of actual furniture that they had there since they brought it with them all the way. The Shumways ended up having six children in all, five girls and one boy, and sadly Laura, the mom, passed away shortly after the birth of their youngest daughter. Um, after about 20 years, the family gave up the farm and moved into Waukegan, not too far away. Some of the daughters had married and moved away. Um, but Emma Shumway, one of the middle sisters, was well established in Waukegan as a businesswoman. She was in real estate, she had her own hat business, and later on she was actually one of the people who helped found uh, Victory Hospital in 1919. But this whole time, this chest remained in the family as an heirloom and was passed from one generation to the next until it eventually ended up all the way out in California. So it really almost traveled from coast to coast, from Vermont to California, before it came back to Lake County to be part of the museum collections. The next piece I wanna show you is from our textile collections. And this is some of the storage we have for textiles. We have hanging racks for our garments. We have pull out trays that we can use for accessories and hats and shoes. And these allow us easy access to things while storing them safely. So this cotton calico dress, um, I wanted to show you from our collection. It was worn by a woman named Marie Ursula Ott from Deerfield. And this is a photo of her. She is not wearing the dress I'm showing you in the photo. That's a different dress. But Maria Ursula Ott came to Illinois with her husband, Lorenz Ott, in 1837. And they settled in a cabin on a farm in Deerfield. And one of the best known stories that we have about the Otts is their involvement with the Underground Railroad. 
I don't know if they intended to get involved with the railroad, but in 1858, they sheltered a man escaping slavery named Andrew Jackson on their farm for the whole winter. Um, he eventually went on to freedom in Canada and the Ots went on with their lives there in Deerfield. But this dress is kind of an interesting piece to have in a museum because it's just an everyday cotton work dress. And that's how I know for sure it's not the one she's wearing in the photo because she would have worn a best dress for her photo. Um, although I do find the buttons on this work dress quite decorative. And it's unusual, I said, because for an everyday work dress to end up in the collections because usually they'd be worn until they were worn out and then the fabric would be cut up for rags or used for quilts and rugs. But this dress survived long enough to be donated. And it does show somewhere, there's a worn patch on the skirt here and there's some worn spots under the arms where it rubbed while she was working. But it's much more common to have special occasion dresses in co museum collections because those are the ones that were worn less and might be passed on. Um, so I'm going to show you one more item. Dresses like this wedding dress um, would be preserved in families and end up in museums. This is a classic 1950s wedding dress, as you can see. This dress was purchased by Lorraine Solosky from the Globe Department Store in Waukegan. And she wore it down the aisle in August 1955 when she married Marvin Lilla at St. Bede's Catholic Church in Ingleside. So thank you for coming with me on this quick overview of our collections. Um, I would like to encourage you to visit our website, www.lcftd.org, and invite you to participate in our COVID-19 documentation project. We want to make sure that today's stories are preserved to tell in the future. So if you go to the website, there's a place where you can upload your stories and photos of what's going on right now. You will also find information about new programming that we're doing and ways that you can continue to support the museum. Thank you.